In this clip, we're going to see how to do a simple gravity problem uh, looking at a um, basically similar to acceleration problems that we're doing previously, but now with the acceleration of gravity. Uh, so let's go to Professor Puckett. That was a little fast. Um, this time, uh, we'll go ahead and slow the video down around 25%, and we can also measure uh, or, or I can call out basically where uh, the time is equal to zero, basically when he lets go of the, the ball. And also I'll uh, give you the time when it reaches three meters, which is the second arrow right here. Um, and so we'll be able to tell the time when, I, when it, time equals zero and when it reaches three meters. Uh, and I'll correct the time so that it's actually the correct time, not the, not the slow down time, the 25% slow down time. And then we'll break over to the, uh, the whiteboard and, and figure out some, uh, some things about uh, how this ball is dropping. All right, let's see it. So let's go ahead and figure out what we can do with this recording. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is actually, let's pretend that we didn't actually know that it took uh, 0.78 seconds to drop the three meters. Um, let's go ahead and just calculate, um, uh, let's just go ahead and see if we can calculate how long it should have taken. How long should the ball take? You know, to drop three meters. Right. And then the second thing we'll find out is um, uh, is is um, uh, how fast is it going at the end? All right. So those are the two things that we're going to try to try to figure out. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll start with number one. Uh, before we even start to do the, the first thing, we need to get some, figure out some things about our problem. Uh, the first thing I like to do is just label my, um, my axes as, as we've always been doing. Um, so again, I'm going to use pretty standard axes with the X going in the plus direction to the right and the Y going in the plus direction up. Um, we also want to go ahead and, and label where um, what we're going to call uh, y is equal to zero. Uh, by the way, just to get let you know, we're going to do this entire problem in y, and I, I know that our equations all uh, over here are all written in x, uh, but um, but the, the equations are just simple equations that you use anytime you have constant acceleration. It can be x, y, z. It doesn't matter. Um, the the book just writes them in x uh, because uh, you need to write some variable. And why not use x? But in our case. All of the equations, instead of being x is equal to x0 plus vt, for example, that should read as y is equal to y0 plus vt when we're thinking about it. Uh, I'm just writing them in this format because it's the format that we've been using. Uh, but you'll see how this goes when we go along. So again, we're not going to really worry about the x direction since the ball drops purely in the y direction. Uh, but we do need to start labeling, for instance, where our, our origin is. Um, I'm going to set um, our origin so that right at the bottom here is where I'm going to call y equals zero. All right, so that's y equals zero. That's going to be the the um, what uh, what we call zero, which of course means then up at the top here, um, y is equal to three meters because we dropped it three meters, right? Uh, so that that makes that makes a fair amount of sense. Um, and we can uh, we can see that this will, this will help us to to basically figure this out. Um, the the first thing I like to do uh, before we even start is figure out what we need to know and what we do know. Again, what we're trying to find um, we're finding um, the time in this case. Okay, and then let's just write down what we know. Well, we know. Let's see. We know y, which is uh, which is um, the the. Um, so this one thing we need to figure out: which one is the beginning, which one's the end? Well, the it starts at time zero up at the top here. So this is actually y zero, all right? Y zero, uh, where that zero or y initial 
uh, corresponds to the um, corresponds to the the time, not the um, not the not not what the actual zero is. So this means uh, so if we see up at the top, that means y y zero y initial means the y at um, time equals zero. That's equal to three meters. Um, so we know y zero. Uh, we also know y or the final y. Um, that's equal to zero. That's that's actually just the y at the end. Um, we sorry, I don't know why it's moving around. Okay. Uh, we also know the initial velocity. We know initially it's not going at all. There's there's no there's no speed at all. There's no um, there's no initial velocity. So we know what the initial velocity is. And finally, we know the acceleration. You may say, well, I don't see anywhere where we talked about the acceleration of the problem. Well, that's because this is a gravity problem. The nice thing about gravity is that uh, it always provides the same acceleration. This acceleration is actually so important that we give it a letter, which is g. Uh, g is just the acceleration due to gravity. Um, well, let's use a different pen, maybe a red one. There we go. So that's the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and that's just equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. And it's always true. Um, it's approximately 10 meters per second squared when you're trying to do quick problems in your head. Um, that's the acceleration due to gravity. And of course, it always puts us down. We always fall down. We don't fall up. Okay, great. So we know the acceleration velocity, um, y0 and y. Those are all the things we know. So now we want to go through and look at our equations and figure out which ones give us t, which is what we're trying to find, um, using these variables we have below. Okay, so let's look at the first equation. Um, again, I'm going to underline things we know and circle things we don't. Um, oh my God. Okay, there we go. Um, we know uh, x. Remember, our x is actually y in this case. So we know y. y is just the, that's just the, this is just the final um, position. We also know y0, all right, which is just the, the position at the end. Um, we don't know the average velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. And we don't know the time. That's what we're actually trying to find. Two unknowns. Uh, it's not a good choice um, because uh, it's, we're not going to be able to solve it with just that equation. Um, the second equation, so I'm going to go ahead and just put a little x. I don't think that'll work. The second equation um, doesn't even have time in it, which is what we're trying to find. So we definitely don't want to use that one. The third equation does have time in it. Um, so let's uh, look at what we know, what we don't know. We don't know the final velocity. We do know the initial velocity. We do know acceleration. We don't know time. Again, I have two unknowns. It's going to not allow me to actually solve this. So no for that one. Let's go to equation four. We know the initial position. Or sorry, the final position. We know the initial position. We know the initial velocity. That's just zero. We don't know the time. We do know the acceleration. Again, we don't know the time. You notice there are two things circled, but they're the same variable. They're both time. And so this equation gives us time, which is what we want to know. And it only has, um, and, and it only ha that's the only variable that's unknown. So this is the one that we want to use. So we want to go ahead and let's use equation four. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it in terms of our, our y variables. Again, it's just the same equation, just written with y. So we just say y is equal to uh, y0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. And I can do something really quickly, which will uh, simplify this right away, which is that I can realize that uh, v0, which we know, is actually 0. Our initial velocity, the velocity at the beginning, is 0. The Professor Puckett drops it from rest. And so this part is actually 0. The great thing about that is it eliminates a whole variable. So you say y is equal to y0 plus 1 half a t squared. Now I know eventually what I want to find is time, so I'm going to go ahead and just solve for time, do some algebra. You should always do your algebra with letters rather than numbers because you're less likely to mess it up. So I'm just going to subtract y0 from both sides. If I subtract y0 from the right side, it just goes away. And then I'm just going to multiply by 2 and divide by a. So we get 2 y minus y0 divided by a. And that's just equal to t squared. And then we'll just take the square root of it. Um, uh, 
And that's our answer. Let's just plug in our numbers. Uh, so if we get the square root of two times y, which is our initial, um, our initial position, or sorry, our final uh, uh, position, our y is equal to zero, the way that we have our coordinates set. So zero meters minus y zero, our initial position is three meters. Now our acceleration, this is really important. You notice our acceleration points down, right? I wrote that up there in the upper left of the picture. But you notice that positive y, as the way we set our coordinates up here in the upper right, um, positive y is up. And so if our acceleration is down, our acceleration is actually negative 9.8 meters per second. Okay, so let's go ahead and correct that over here as negative 9.8 meters per second. That's technically negative g. All right, and so let's go ahead and put in negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And you notice this is pretty important we did this because we're going to get zero minus three is gonna give us a negative in the top of that equation. We need a negative at the bottom, otherwise we're taking a square root of a negative number, which we never want to do. All right, let's go ahead and do that calculation and see what we get. Uh, we do square root of two, and we get that the time should be equal to 0 0.78 meters per second squared. Or sorry, uh, that's not the right units at all. Uh, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing. All right, 0 0.78. We had meters on the top, meters per second squared on the bottom. The meters cancel out. You have square root of second squared, which just gives us seconds. So there we go. P is equal to 0.78 seconds. Um, so that's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. We can now then just go ahead and quickly find the final velocity, the velocity at the end. We actually have a lot of different equations we can use for that one um, because uh, we know a lot of different things. I think equation three will get us the quickest. Um, so if we just say that V is equal to V zero plus AT, um, again, V zero is zero. So V is just equal to AT. And we now know what the time is. We also know what the acceleration is. So we get 9.8 meters per second squared. We got the time, which is 0 0.78 seconds. And then that just gives us that the final velocity is 7.7 .7 meters per second, or you know somewhere around 15 miles an hour, which is pretty good for a three meter drop. That's why you can really hurt yourself when you drop off of a, a, a three meter high or 15 foot high uh, platform. You're going about 15 miles an hour when you land, which of course is pretty darn fast. Okay, I hope that was a helpful, a, a useful um, thing on how to do uh, these types of problems. Uh, please uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in class.